Today in the book guide, we're gonna be looking at saddle soap. We're gonna be looking at the uses of it, how to use it, and we're gonna use my Red Wing 606s that I've neglected for the last five months by leaving them in the garage as the guinea pig example and just showing you how to apply saddle soap. All right, let's begin. So like I said, we're gonna work with my 606s. These are my old work boots. I've left these in the garage for the last five months, all through the winter. I truly have neglected them. They are dried out. Now, when I stopped using them, they were already a little dried out, but the winter was pretty harsh. And remember the thing about leaving leather products in an environment where moisture is just being zapped away, which is your garage and which is the winter. I mean, everything about the winter is about removing moisture, right? So these could really use some TLC. Now the saddle soap I'm gonna be using is Armstrong's All Natural Brooklyn Saddle Soap. Now this is good stuff. This is a real natural product. This isn't like the stuff you're gonna pick up from your local drugstore or wherever where it's got a lot of other heavy metals and dryers added to the saddle soap. This is an all natural saddle soap. So basically what that means is that the two major ingredients is gonna be lalloin and beeswax. Lalloin, super important. It's an animal product. It restores dried out leather to a more natural state. Now it's not gonna bring things that are completely dead back to life. You're gonna need other types of creams and things like that. But when it comes to doubling the use of an old pair of work boots, a really good saddle soap is something that you can use for that. Now, when most people talk about saddle soap or think about saddle soap, the one thing that they're thinking is that it's just for cleaning. And though it makes a great cleaner, it is an elbow grease leather cleaner. What I mean by that is you really have to work saddle soap. It, it will get leather clean, but you really have to put a lot of muscle behind it. It is not a quick fix. When you have something that you love, and I mean really love that's made out of leather, and you use saddle soap with a cloth, it is going to look beautiful when you are done. Now, for the demonstration, I have a few tools, I have a few things that I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using a shoe brush in order to just brush off the boots before I get to adding saddle soap to them. Really important, this is one of those tools that you need to have in your repertoire of boot care products. If you don't own a boot brush, get yourself a boot brush, especially when you spend a lot of money on footwear. If you enjoy buying better handmade footwear, having a boot brush around just to keep them clean and just to move some of the oil around from one place to another is a really good tool to have. I'll be using the saddle soap from Armstrong's and to apply it, I am going to use a cloth. I'm not gonna use an applicator brush. Now the applicator brushes are wonderful. This is a great tool to use. If you don't like getting your hands dirty, and I mean truly getting your hands dirty, if getting saddle soap on your hands or under your nails is something that you just don't wanna do, use an applicator brush. But if you can look beyond that, get your fingers in there. Take your saddle soap, move it around with your hand, get it in there, get a feel for what the material actually is. And also important is to have a glass of water on the side. Use warm tap water. As hot as your tap can get, fill up a glass with that warm water. The warmer the water, the easier it's gonna to be to break down the beeswax. Beeswax, as it gets colder, it gets harder. As it gets warmer, it gets softer. So not only from the friction of rubbing the rag on the boot, but the temperature of the water is gonna help you through the process and you're gonna see better results using warmer water. All right. I think the Red Wings are ready to have the laces taken out, the insoles pulled out. Let's begin, shall we? Okay, so the first thing we wanna look at is we wanna examine the boots. We really wanna take a good look at the boots and just make sure there's no cracks happening. Now, on this pair right here, I've got some abrasion and I got some cracks that are starting to happen and it's mainly just the drying out of the leather. So I wanna pay really close attention to all my flex lines. Now, since this is more of my carpentry boot that I use, I've done a lot of finished carpentry, I'd put a lot of floors in, did a lot of cabinet making with these boots on. So this boot is actually being exposed to a lot of sawdust and sawdust is another harsh material on leather products because sawdust just pulls moisture out of everything it sits on. It absorbs the moisture. So this boot, really needs some saddle soap. It really needs some TLC. Now, 
Once I'm done with this, I'm gonna bring these boots out to my old man's house. We have the same foot size, so we're gonna be able to share this pair of boots. And like I said, there's a lot of life left in here. The sole's a little worn down, but the 606 from Red Wing is a great boot. It really does last a long time. So let's pull out the laces and we'll start to brush the boot. Laces can throw those to the side because we're not gonna need those for a while. Now, for this boot being about three or, well, this boot's four years old, I think these are still the original laces. I'm really impressed with Red Wings laces over the last five years. They really have stepped up their game and they really include some nice Taslan laces. All right, so inside here, inside here, we have to brush the boot. So let's move our stuff aside. Let's get everything off so we don't get any of the debris from the boot onto any of our cleaning stuff. And let's just get inside here. Let's get inside here. Let's carry that through the front of the boot. Let's brush out that welt all the way around. Let's give this, this a nice brushing. Not a lot of stuff coming off. I blew them off before I brought these home the other day. So just having the compressed air going through all the sections of the boot probably got rid of most of the harder, heavier stuff that was kind of ground in, but still, before we start saddle soaping our boots up, we want to brush them. All right, I think that's enough. It looks good. It doesn't look like there's anything going on. Nah, we're good. Let's start with some saddle soap. Okay, so let's examine the saddle soap. Like I said, if you don't want to touch this stuff with your hands, get yourself an applicator brush. Now the applicator brush, you're gonna to have to go really slow and get the saddle soap to start working and you will have to dab some water into your saddle soap in order to get it moving. I'm gonna dab a little water in here now just to get things started. Gonna start moving it around as you can see. Yeah, that's, that's starting really nice. And saddle soap, look at that. And you can really pull some of that stuff out. You can tell there's a lot of wax. In the Armstrongs, there's a lot of natural wax in there, which I think is a nice thing. I think adding a coat of wax to your boots is a really good thing. It just keeps them, it, it's, it's like a top layer surface in order for that moisture not to flash off. Now it does slow down transference from heat and sweat and keeping your boot dry. Yeah, all that stuff starts to happen, but to keep the conditioning of your boot really nice, saddle soap, wax, all of it nice. All right, so put that back in there. And like I said, I'm gonna use a rag, a basic rag. This is my shoe rag. This is just one of the rags that I keep in my box with all my shoe stuff. And I'm gonna dip it in there. I'm not gonna soak it, just gonna get a little water. And I'm gonna start moving it around in this can. And we're gonna keep moving it around. We're gonna soften up the material in the can. You can see it's starting to apply to the rag. And we're gonna soften that up a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna add just a little bit more water just to this, just to, just to get this stuff nice and soft and get a nice coat to start coming off here. All right, that's good. And I'm going to start with this boot here. Now here, you can look at the tips of my boots because I do a lot of trim carpentry. You can just tell being down on your knees sitting in a cross-legged position that your boots are gonna get beat up and worn out in these places. So let's start in a toe. I think it's the one place that we're actually gonna see a difference happen. So got a little saddle soap on your rag, you got your worn spot, slowly start making circular patterns. Just keep going around in a circle and just keep working that saddle soap in. Now, if you feel that this is too slow of a process, and you want to see bigger results, stick your finger in there, pull out a glump, add it to the boot, just like that, and then a little bit of water, and you can do this. Now, this might be a little bit quicker, and you might see results happen a lot faster because now you're going to wait for this saddle soap to kind of disappear, and you're going to rub it all the way through your boot. But... I actually like to go a little bit slower and just kind of gauge the response and just keep dipping in from the saddle soap to the water. But since I did this, 
let's keep going with it. Now you would think it'd be a great thing sharing a boot size with your old man because you get to share boots, but what has really happened was over the last few years since he's retired, he has inherited all my boots and now he actually has an extremely nice collection of work boots and casual boots. So I guess in the long run, it's worked out well for him. All right, I need to take the insole out of this boot so I can really get my hand in there. And there you go. Inside here, I've got a Carolina insole, not a Red Wing. For some reason, I always love those Aeroglide 7 insoles inside these boots. I think this is my second set that I had in there. Excellent insole. All right, we're going to keep going around in circles. Now what I'm looking for is for this white stuff that's going on in the tip of the toe there, I really want to make that vanish because I want to rub that material all the way back through the boot. Like I said, this is a slow process. Saddle soaping your boots or cleaning anything with saddle soap is a very slow process. This is not like, say, mink oil in your boots or adding leather conditioner because you're really working the saddle soap into the boot. You're trying to take a solid from what this is and you're trying to work it through friction into a liquid form. And that's why this is such a slow process. At some point, you're going to start to see suds happening. You're going to start to see it kind of foaming up. And that's nice. Right in here, you can see where you can start to see that it's starting to foam up. It actually looks like soap would. And just keep rubbing that in. Remember, get your welts always. Anytime you see this coloration in your boot for what the boot once was for its natural color, you kind of want to work that section. Now let me warn you now, if you were expecting this to look completely different and brand new, it's not. We're just restoring moisture to the boot. We're not changing the color. We're not adding anything that's going to make them darker or softer. Though, anytime you start rubbing leather, it's going to make it softer just by friction alone and just the nature of heat. Now it's hard to tell on camera, but it is a darker shade now. It has a lot more shine to it and it does just look a lot better. The leather feels better. It feels like there's a coat on there where this just feels like old dried out leather. This has a nice sheen to it, a nice softer feel to it. All right, so that's pretty nice. You can see a big difference from where we started. Just by rubbing the saddle soap in and just by getting it warm and worked in with the oil that already exists in the leather. And you can also see just the discoloration on the rag that it did pull a lot of dirt and a lot of grime out of the little pores and cracks and lines that rubbing that saddle soap in there, loosening that stuff up, pulling it away, and then just the beeswax settling into the leather. I mean, it's got a really nice touch and feel to it. So, wow, quite an improvement, I must say. The results are exactly what I was expecting for saddle soap, especially a natural saddle soap like Armstrong's make. It, the boots look exactly like I expected them to. And you gotta remember, the whole process of cleaning your boots, of reconditioning your boots with saddle soap is not a quick process. It's probably gonna take you anywhere from 15 minutes to a half an hour, depending on the conditioning of your boots. And if it's your first time actually cleaning your boots and reconditioning your boots with saddle soap. It's a labor of love, so just sit there and enjoy it. Enjoy taking the time to really look over your boots because they're your boots. You bought these, you wear them every day. Either they make you money or they get you to where you need to be. So you might as well love them and care about them. 
Hey, if you enjoyed this video and you want to know more about Armstrong's All Natural, please swing by to bootguy.com. I will have links to all the products that I use today. And I will also have a video about mink oiling and reconditioning your boots from a really dilapidated state. Hey, if you enjoyed this, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also remember, comment below. If you're somebody who's got a better way of saddle soaping your boots, please comment below. Let us all know what you're doing in order to recondition your old work boots. All right, if you got any questions about saddle soaping your boots or if you just want to know some of the other products that I use for my boot care maintenance, remember you can always shoot me over an email. All right, until the next time, I'm the Boot Guy. Thanks a lot for watching.